What is up, Retro Maniacs? Welcome to Retro Card Chat Podcast. My name is Mike, and I am from Mike's Retro Trading Cards. And I'm joined by two men that have been training like Mike Tyson. They're ready to put the gloves on and throw that knockout punch. <laughs> they are, of course, Joe Day and EP. How you doing, guys? Doing great. I got a. I opened up a pack of uh, 1987 tops last yesterday, and okay, uh, boring. There's a stick of gum in it that doesn't actually look that bad. Ooh. Ooh. Actually, it looks almost like the gum loose look like. Yeah. But it left this like stain. I don't know if you guys can see it on the, yeah. the package. I can see it. Yeah. Yep. It's see pretty, that, yeah. pretty gross. But um, if we get 20 likes on this video and three people comment saying, do it, I'm going to eat this gum next week. Wait, do I want to show? We count? Do we count do as we comments? Count? No. Nope. <laughs> nope. So we got three, three comments and 20 likes. I'm going to put it in this container, save it for next week. And also. <laughs> Putting it in the container. Listen, I gotta keep, gotta keep it. Gotta keep thirty it fresh, plus you know? years, thirty-five years old, isn't it? <laughs> I drink energy drinks on the show every once in a while, mm -hmm. and if anybody wants me to do a mini review of a different flavor every week, same deal. Twenty twenty likes and leave a comment. Leave the comment energy. If you do both, say you can do do it and energy in the same comment. That's fine. If you only want energy, then energy. If you don't, if you don't want to see me try to eat the gum, that's fine. Wow. But just okay. three three comments and then twenty likes, and okay. I'll do it. I will be calling all my relatives to make sure that happens. <laughs> I am speechless. I am without speech. Wow. Um, That's saying yeah. something. I know, right? Uh, I, on the other hand, I'm going to, it's uh, 1048 on Sunday morning. Time to crack open a beer. Time, Got a nice yeah. one here. Curious Gourd, in case you were curious. Wow. Wait. Yeah, that sounds that's, awful. Oh, delicious, man. I, I did a coffee. taste test last night. Oh, you have coffee. You gotta, you gotta keep your wits about you, Mikey. I know. I'm the only one has any sanity left on this podcast. <laughs> All right, let's roll, boys. All right. Well, plugging beers, plugging energy drinks, plugging <laughs> coffee aside, we actually have a reason to be here today. Um, I don't know if you guys heard, but there was a little bit of drama in the hobby this week. Uh, really? Yes, a little bit. I, I'm, I'm probably you probably don't know what's going on here, but uh, <laughs> you know, not too long ago we did an ep episode of Short Prints where we talked about conspiracy theories, and in that one of our, I believe, our first topic was the fact that breakers were getting juiced up cases to open online you know we had you guys had a nice little back and forth i rewatched it today i'll put a link to that video down in the description a bit. uh but it turns out that we were a little bit ahead of the times on the news there uh this week backyard breaks you know they they pull a lot of really big stuff they're the biggest breaker in the hobby like them or not they break a lot of product and you know there was some controversy brought up we'll call it controversy for now i'm not really sure if it is or if it isn't but we'll get into that but uh yeah they there was some data put out there and some videos put out there claiming that maybe backyard breaks was getting juiced up cases for their breaks uh a lot to tackle here, a lot to dive into. So try to take it topic by topic so we don't, you know, get all over the place. Try to keep it kind of a clean conversation. And Joe, I mean clean conversation. Uh, I'm going to try not to swear this week. I, I'm going to start I, at the I, beginning. I might be in trouble. I might be in trouble, actually. <laughs> I, might, I might cuss. <laughs> but about midweek this week, uh, the collect collectibles guru on Twitter, which is a great follow, and I should have written his handle down, and I didn't, and I apologize for that. I will put that in the description, too, because he deserves follow. But he put some data out there that determined that the possibility of backyard breaks hitting what he called product hits, because they were giant hits that came out of the product, um, was 0.5 percent for them to pull all four that they did and that is based on them buying 40 million dollars in product uh throw it to you where do you want to start with this ep i mean that the the number is astronomical like the, there's there's still a chance like people people win the lottery and then a month later they win the lottery again sure but this uh, it looks like it's four times it's four times i think maybe people 
one of my concerns with this whole thing is that they're, they're everybody they're calling these four cards case um, or product hits mm-hmm. where, but who determines what, what is a product hit? And I think some, maybe they're stretching a little bit with some of the stuff, but they are four pretty big hits. I, I, I agree with that. And the numbers don't, I mean, as a, a collectibles guru said, numbers don't lie. And uh, then the odds of them hitting these cards are pretty ast- astronomical. Definitely. Yeah. Joe, you know, I was, I was before the podcast, I was scrolling through his Twitter feed and the vitriol he was getting from some of the people. He, he like, handled it great. He was very, yeah, he handled it very, very, very professionally. Yeah, and, yeah. and, um, and which he has no obligation to, it's not like he's CEO right. of leaf or something and should, <laughs> should handle himself better on social media. But, but, um, some of the vitriol about, well, I saw this breaker hit 12 other logo, man. I saw this breaker hit this and this breaker hit that. It's like, you know, you know, the difference between other logo men and Mm -hmm. other hits versus the four that we're talking about. Right. And that's not even including a very expensive Trevor Lawrence card that got them in trouble in the first place. I mean, the odds of hitting just the LeBron logo man, which apparently I've heard, the most important card in the history of collecting. Ken Gold said it must be true, <laughs> but for them to hit those four is just crazy. We we've gone on hot streaks, whether it's fantasy football, whether it's open Mike opening up retail, just killing it as he always does. But always. <laughs> no one, no one goes on a hot streak like this. It's it's. I've sat next to people in in uh, casinos in blackjack, and they haven't gone on hot streaks this crazy. <laughs> I have a little bit of a math background. I I was a statistics major in college, so I will start by saying I have severe reservations about the math behind what he did. The numbers don't look great, but you can't take. He took the data from the four products. Just simply there was an error. Like you you can't cherry pick what products you want to use to make these numbers. You need to go over all the products that you have to include all of that in there. You can't just take the numbers from the four that they got hits out of and show the probability. You have to show all the ones they didn't get it out of too. Like you're not getting an accurate number. So that that percentage that he came up with is not a valid number. It's too high, it, right? It, it, it is, yeah. Because if, yeah. You, if you look at all the product that they break for a year, you have to count all of that in. And you don't have that data. Nobody has that data. So we can't accurately come up with the probability. You can't take the four that they got them out of and said, this is so weird that they got it out of this four. They opened more than those four. If they had only opened those four products, that would be an accurate way to do it. But like the whole, the whole premise that he used, the whole theory that he used was not valid. You have to look at everything. And if you take all of the product they opened, all the hits, if you had the production numbers, you would find out that the probability, it wouldn't be a high probability, but it would be a lot higher than one half of 1%. So, you know, you, you, that that's a big problem for me because a lot of people are just throwing that number out there. Nobody's really, like, I, I have seen some people that have brought up like the math being wrong, but like they haven't really given the reasoning. You, again, you can't only cherry pick part of it. If you're going to give a reasonable, accurate representation of what their odds were, you have to include everything. So that kind of disappointed me a little bit that they went that direction with it and everybody just ran with it because you post something on social media that you put work into. He clearly did and came up with numbers, but they're they're not legitimate numbers so that's my issue there yeah that's a that's a fair point i mean and we also don't know what other hits they got well Mm. we do i mean you could watch hours and hours and hours and hours of of streams to know other big hits they've gotten so i'm sure those four hits while we're only looking at those four because they are such huge hits 
they have gotten other big hits as well. So that part of the it has to be included in, in that calculus too. I mean, if they're getting big time hits out of products beyond those four, but I completely agree. I mean, they're opening up a lot of product. I'd be interested to see how much they are opening up. Mm -hmm. um, but just, I mean, they're constantly running breaks. I mean, aren't they t practically 24 seven? They I are, mean, they they are, are yeah. 24 yeah. hours a day on four yeah. channels on what? So, so. And I think I they're saw running a neat. ton of, they're opening up yeah. a ton of product. I think I saw something like they open like four boxes of national treasures a day or something like that. Like they're, they are opening a ton of product for sure. Yeah, definitely. But yeah. Uh, uh, like to go back to your point, Mike, we, we need to know how much they're buying also, like how much mm -hmm. they, they have, like how much they've purchased of all this stuff. Yeah. On top of all the numbers, the 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 production numbers, which we don't have the production numbers either. So I mean, mm. there's a lot of a lot of really tough things to to yeah. sort out. And I, I'm not way. saying that in defense of okay, they mm -hmm. there's nothing going on here. I'm just letting people know that the numbers they're using aren't accurate. You can't base anything off of the numbers that they're giving. Mm -hmm. uh, next step in this little story was sports card radio who you know joe you're a big fan of the channel um, big fan. i enjoy watching them too ep mm -hmm. you're a little maybe not quite as much but that's fine mm -hmm. but they did they I had don't a, i don't dislike them i just don't uh, they're yeah yeah I, f I find them they're find a medium yep <laughs> okay and that's fair everybody has their own opinion uh but they had a big investigation live stream on what was that thursday night friday night friday night so uh, where they were trying to delve into the backyard breaks situation and what was going on there and if they are getting some kind of juiced boxes cases from Panini, basically, I believe is what they were claiming. Uh, one of the first things they brought up was that the break winners weren't known for any of these big products. Um, I don't know if that is true or not. I don't know if you guys have any insight on that. I don't what I don't think it matters. I mean, if you win the lottery, you don't want people knowing you won the lottery. Mm -hmm. Like if I if I bought into a backyard break and won the logo man, won the logo man, um, I I wouldn't want people to know who I am. I mean, that's a seven figure card. I you know, like to the point where it could be dangerous, to be honest. I mean, um, you know, I watch Leighton. I don't know who wins things. There was there was a card that was pulled that I really wanted, and I even <laughs> I even put in there uh, the video comments. Hey, if you know who won that, can you uh, let me know because I want to buy that card <laughs> off of them. Um, obviously didn't hear back, but like, yeah, I I wouldn't if I was in, buying into a break and and hit a massive card like that. I wouldn't I wouldn't want my information out there. So I think that's a moot point. A lot, a lot of breakers. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure 100% about um, Leighton, but I know backyard breaks. If you ever watch their breaks, I didn't watch the breaks that, that, that are in question. Mm -hmm. But you know, they they often talk, they say the name of the person that is winning, that is getting the cards. Like they'll say the first name of the person. They don't say like the full name right. or, or anything mm -hmm. like that. Most breakers will do that. They'll either put a card on the screen that has a name and then like a last initial or something like that or, or something like that to show, hey, this is the person that bought this, just to prove to the the customer is like, this is your box kind of, kind mm -hmm. of thing. And I don't know, again, I didn't see this particular break if they did the first names or not, but typically they do that at the breaks I've seen from backyard breaks. I don't know if either of you guys watched any of the live stream. Um, I, I, I do work. give them, I give them credit that they had a lot of people on that had dissenting opinions from them. Uh, you know, the first guest they had on EP, one of your favorite was the Mojo breaks. And, you know, he, he added a lot of, you know, reality to the situation. He was talking about, you know, anybody who breaks that much product has to be buying a large amount of it from the secondary market, from distributors and from other sources. You just can't open as much as they are of like national treasures by getting it from Panini. They can't get it all from Panini. So, you know, the, unless the, there's something, unless there's something fishy going on, I mean, Right. I mean, well, if, I mean, if no, something I'm, fishy is going on, then they're not getting all it? that product from Panini, though, because they would know like all the distributors would be shorted and they'd be like, why are we not getting this? And they have right. it all. So it would be very obvious if Panini was giving that to them. And, you know, one of the things, though, I didn't think was brought up was if they buy like, let's throw out the premise that this is true, that they're getting juiced cases. 
they could be getting them from Panini and not opening those right away. I like nobody was really talking about this. They were talking about how, you know, well, it's going on all this time. Well, yeah, my opinion would be if you were going to do something fishy and something fishy was going on, if you got the case that had the big hit in it, you would put that away because oh, yeah. you want to sell breaks right yes, you're, so, yes, you're, so you're gonna hold that back and sell breaks as long as you can before you pull that like the the triple logo man the prices of of what was that flawless that they NT. like yeah no it wasn't NT. oh was it flawless okay. yeah i think the ones that come in the oh yeah the yeah. briefcase ones yeah I think I was they thinking immaculate like, for some reason. They dropped yeah, right. by fifty percent after. Yeah, that nobody wants that product now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. you know, you you would hold it back. I'm not saying this happens, but this is something that wasn't really brought up. Like there is a lot. If you know which case it's in, though, yeah, right. You would have that's to why know. I'm, what case well, it's and in. that's what I'm saying. If we're working on the premise that somebody there is sending them something, they know what it's in. They know right. it's in this case. You're going to hold that case. That doesn't help either party. No, <laughs> if they, no, if they pull yeah. it right now, it doesn't help either party. Yeah, like there, there's no there's not. no money in it for them. That's why this seems like it's probably probably not um, not really like super fishy. Like, yeah, the live stream itself. I I mean, there was no real ground broken during it it was just a lot of people giving their opinions like we're giving now both sides of it uh i mean there's not there was no evidence provided you know if if i wanted to believe this watching the live stream all eight hours of it like i i would not have found anything in that that said yep there it is so like it, it's really all just debate a lot of people just giving opinions, saying stuff might be a little wonky, maybe it's not, like, but there was no ground broken, like, there was no evidence given in the whole thing. And I feel like, I, I don't know what the purpose of the video was, I like, I, I feel like it was more so just to draw viewers to the channel that they they didn't present any evidence like a lot of times they do i give them credit like you know when they're doing the 86 flare box they had a lot of information that they mm -hmm. dug up this wasn't like that and i i think part of me was expecting a, them to have some kind of concrete information that they just didn't give i mean i know ep wants youtube videos to be held to the same standard as newspapers <laughs> and uh news channels not, not, no 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 they no. are not they are they, not they don't, they don't they, need to be but if you're gonna okay. if you're gonna play journalism then you need to also do the journalism stuff like that's that's my opinion but they like, do most of the, like mike said well, most, most of the, of the most time, of the time. they sure. do i mean but still most, at the end of the day it's a youtube channel that's trying to draw eyeballs and this i'm assuming drew a lot of eyeballs shockingly i did not watch i mean eight hours is a long time <laughs> to watch a live stream um i'll probably you know dive into it here and there and maybe like watch it at, at one and a half speed or whatever but i mean I, like I, from what i've heard of the live stream i'm I'm disappointed that there wasn't i, I didn't expect a silver bullet like oh we have someone mm -hmm. from panini that's saying oh yeah we juice their cases all mm -hmm. the time there wasn't that from my understanding again i haven't watched it so i am hearing secondhand and from you know social media and and, and things like that um but I have mentioned in the past about sports card radio is, you know, some of their stuff is, is very good. It's very on point, like the, the FLIR box, but some of their stuff is just looking for clickbait, which is fine. They are an online for the most part opinion YouTube channel. I mean, of course that, I mean, we even put sometimes Mike in the title, we'll try and put something clickbaity in a little bit. I mean, I, I have no problem. <laughs> I would never. I, would I have never. no I have no problem with it. I mean, again, EP wants Cronkite, but uh, you know, they're they're a YouTube opinion channel. It, I, it is what it is. I don't need Cronkite, but if you're gonna levy like accusations kind of against people, like have something to back it up. Like I feel like oh, through all of it, I know they've they tried to get comments, but if you don't have some you don't have backyard breaks denying it and you don't have Panini denying it. Then I don't, but I feel like you, you like you need to at least reach out to them and get a comment from them. And I don't know if this, I don't, I don't think this uh, like um, stumbles over any of our upcoming topics. But like in this day and age of social media, and Twitter, and everything, if this, if there was something really shady happening, don't you think somebody at Panini would have like said something, so said no, something to somebody? I completely no? disagree. Really? Why, why, why would they? Because then you're you're 
You don't think some lo- some, some person no. in like a warehouse somewhere would so I used to work, warehouse would I used to work in politics. Okay. If if some crazy candidate or crazy surrogate or whatever said something crazy, you don't address it because all that does is put more eyeballs on no, it. No, no, like no. why I'm, would you do I'm that? I'm saying not I'm not saying not in an official capacity. I'm saying somebody who works in the underbelly of the company saying, "Hey, this this is totally happening. I, I've, Maybe I've seen that that's who's commenting on Collector Guru's tweets. We don't know. If they're in the other be- underbelly, we don't know who's commenting on this stuff. I mean, it could be someone from Panini who's commenting on the videos or the tweets. We we don't know. Or maybe they run a tight ship. I doubt that because Panini's terrible. But, uh, you know, if if I'm Panini, no way do I respond to this if they send me a, a, an, an email or a, or a request for comment mm-hmm. because you're giving credence to it. Even denying right. it is giving it credence. Like you don't do that. That oh, is yeah. just, you know, I, that's I politics 101. I don't know business wise, Mike, you're the business guy, but politics 101, I I would never respond to something which EP, you're admitting is kind of outlandish, right? Like outlandish mm-hmm. oh, that yeah. it's actually going on. Why right. would a company comment on that? It, right. it, there's no benefit. There's no benefit to even denying it. Yeah. And I, I don't think, EP is saying they would, like they wouldn't, like. But you have to try. You have he to try. He does not yes, need I, your I, I do protection, Mike. He can fight his own battles. <laughs> no, I, I, I totally understand his point, though, and I, I do agree with it. And you know, I do agree with Panini not responding. I do agree with Backyard Breaks. You know, in a business, professional, official capacity, not responding to it because if there's not like there's nothing to be gained by them to respond to it. What the only thing they would say is this is not true. But them even saying that could make some people think, well, that must be yeah, true right, because they said it right. wasn't true. So yeah, like in in, in today's, there in today's is world, no, oh. no gain for mm-hmm. anybody to comment on. So. And I tro- I totally believe that Sports Card Radio reached out to both of them. Like anyone who doesn't, EP, anyone who doesn't believe that Sports Card Radio actually reached out to them is nuts because they want controversy. They yeah, love they, they they, did, they, did they say they, did they say on the live stream that they reached out to him, but they got they could, could not get a response. I, I can't say for sure. Like I didn't I, I watch think they did on social hours, media, so, yeah, but I think they. Did I know Darren Ravel, Darren Ravel did, but yeah, um, I don't know about them. Too, so, but again, I mean, uh, Darren Ravel probably wasn't expecting them to give a response because anybody, right. I, I don't know why anybody would think they would respond. So, mm-hmm. um, one of the questions I had, though, like I, I know there's a lot of question about the money behind backyard breaks. Uh, they started off what like a year and a half ago and they started off right away with four channels on whatnot which you know mojo break was saying how that's really odd that they did um there's definitely money behind that operation i'm not saying it not legal money but like i i think sports card radio i think that's one of their things i think they really want to know where the money's coming from behind that not that it's their right to know mm-hmm. i mean you know not saying that it's anything shady they probably have an investor i don't like i don't think a startup company could get the amount of loans that they would need to jump in and do the amount of product they were doing from pretty much the get-go so but like part of my like i i know sports card radio has referred a couple times to why don't they sue us so we can find out in discovery you know who owns the company where the money's coming from part of me feels like maybe this live stream and them going after them might be just to try to do that like i i I'm putting two and two together here just from comments they made. And, you know, I, I know they've said that with Ken Golden too. So I, I makes me wonder if their whole point of it is to try to find out where the money is coming from for backyard breaks. Uh, just as an aside, if anyone wants to sue us, uh, the name on the channel is Mike's retro <laughs> trading cards. I don't Has know. nothing to do with Joe Day no. or, or, EP or, EP. or anything <laughs> like that. So just keep that in mind, people. If we say anything you don't like, Mike's retro trading cards. Uh, you as know, for that, this, those cards I have up there, that's pretty much all I have. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, you sue me, I will mail that out. That's really all you're going to get. So. He also has a lot of Paul Heyman's. I don't know if anyone knows that. <laughs> he does have those. Um, I don't. But no, that's I got right, rid that's, of those. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> they're Amy's. <laughs> <laughs> they're Amy's. 
<laughs> That's a really good point, though, about, you know, kind of a fishing expedition, because when you go on a, a stream for eight hours bashing, I, <laughs> they, I don't agree with everything they do. I find it funny. I find it hysterical when they show clips of, of different influencers saying stupid things. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact is, I mean, if they want to, if they want to get sued, I, I, I don't think, I don't think backyard is going to take the bait and we're going to talk no, about their response either. later, but I don't think backyard is going to take the bait. And honestly, what does Panini have to gain? They're just trying to sell and get out of this is industry anyway. So I, I, I wouldn't understand uh, any benefit of, of suing. Uh, you know, they talk about the watches they own and the Teslas they drive, but I, you know, it, are two individuals and whatever sports card radio is, is worth. Uh, that's not worth it for either one of those major companies uh, to go after. I will say about backyard breaks. I, and I, I really should have rewatched it before the pod, but they did this, like um, how I got into breaking series. It was like a, almost like done like TV series. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching it at the time going, where did they get the money for the break? Like, it just seemed like they went from, he went from like a, uh, don't quote me. He went from like a door to door salesman or something like silly. He had some sort of online presence, but he went from that to the biggest breaker, mm -hmm. absolute biggest breaker in the last couple of years. And it just, it's, it's mind blowing. And, and their antics as fun as they are. I don't know how you can go from just starting out to where they're at now with, you know, just their antics. I mean, there you need are, big hits to do that. Yeah, there are a lot of people in this industry that have money behind them. Like, like we know that. We talk about different characters all the time that clearly have money behind them. That doesn't mean there's the Navarro like, cartel. Yeah, no, that I'm I'm not saying that it's any <laughs> kind of illegal money. Like, there are many legal ways that people can right. have money, but I think it's pretty clear, at least to me as a business person, you can tell the people that have money behind them. Like, and you know, they're usually pretty high profile. They're they act a certain way, mm -hmm. but they clearly have money behind them to help them push the product. They're pushing that's fine and sports card yeah. radio does take a look at that too and there yeah, are there's a lot nothing of people, there's mom nothing and dad wrong with that. yeah them. exactly so like it, it doesn't mean that it's anything bad there are maybe they're just lucky maybe they hustled really hard maybe somebody mm -hmm. knew how to get investors behind them yeah, like there sure. are so many yeah. legitimate ways to do it that just having the money behind you doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong yeah, uh, I watched them. Um, I'm pretty sure towards the very beginning of what you know, I saw it on TikTok. I saw them doing some breaks, and they were in a garage or they were in a warehouse somewhere because they were. You could see rafters. Like there was no, mm -hmm. there was nothing. It was, you know, and they, they had just had you know, a screen up behind Wait, them. So they weren't had had in a backyard. No, they were actually. They, they might have been in a backyard once or twice, but it was like in a, <laughs> in a like in a like a garage. And uh, I remember, and they had they're the same breakers then, same antics, really mm -hmm. loud about some hits that aren't necessarily hits like being super excited about cars that aren't exactly hits, but like that, and that kind of draw eyeballs. And then you can see where people might come in and say, Hey, listen, I really like what you're doing. I want to back you and, and give you guys some money to, to, in, in, you know, increase your, the, the cards you're, you're providing and stuff. So yeah, I, I totally could see them, especially in this day and age and the, the way social media and everything is and the way whatnot works and everything. I could see people watching and then more and more people watching. And then all of a sudden, Hey, you guys watch these guys and I can right. see it growing, growing crazily. Um, uh, uh, to go, but to, to go back to our, the original point of this, this part, this conversation, like them getting sued is probably the dumbest. If, if they're trying to get sued, that's a really dumb idea. Just get the tax documents. They're, they're legal. They're a business. So you can get the, you can file for the tax documents and get the tax documents and see who the ownership, uh, who owns the company and who a really know, good accountant can hide a lot of stuff. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, can it, you do that? Possible. You can't do that though with a privately owned business. Can oh, you? maybe, maybe, um, I think I did, you, they're not, they're not a public you, company. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you wouldn't be able, like, you can't tell we, what their financials are. I think they're an LLC, but okay. you know, that's not, they're not a publicly traded company. So okay. They can't do that. To, to hmm. your point, EP, they are the perfect, TikTok generation breaker. They are. I mean, 
I would never watch him. They're on I'm, TikTok I'm, and Twitch I'm, and everywhere. Yeah. I'm 42 years old. I have no interest. I'm the young one in this group. I have no <laughs> interest whatsoever to watch them go crazy about a Walter Jones booklet, patch, mm -hmm. auto, whatever. I have no interest in that. And then you have companies like Layton who are – Honestly, they're kind of boring. They are. They just open up product. They're, I mean, mm -hmm. if I was going to break with someone, it would probably be with them because they are really a boring company. They just go through the products. They they make a ridiculous boom for a Sam Ellinger rookie or, or whatever, but it is what it is. I mean, Brackyard Breaks is the perfect TikTok company to do breaks for sure. And I, I mean, give them a lot of credit for that. I, I'm a pro wrestling fan. So even though I don't like, backyard breaks is not for me like i i wouldn't watch that they have their gimmick and they play it perfectly and there's a huge audience for it so like you can't fault the guys they're they're acting that way they're they're playing their gimmick oh, they're just sure. like a professional wrestler goes out and plays his gimmick like they're taking probably their own personalities and turning them up to 20. You know, they're just, they have their gimmick and people buy into it and, you know, they provided something different. They found a way to get into an industry and make themselves stand out. And like, regardless of how you feel about them, you have to respect the fact that they did that. And we went to the national and I know we commented there and we commented on videos afterwards, how many you know, teenagers and young people were there and involved and knew their cards and knew their comps and knew what they could trade for and knew this and knew that. I guarantee you every single one of them watches Backyard Breaks. Oh, I'm sure. They're not yeah. watching Layton. They're not watching Not Layton. watching us. Yes. <laughs> I, They're not watching I, us. I, I, They're I, watching I, Backyard Breaks. I even told you guys when I, I actually saw Backyard Breaks is um, when I was, I was wondering, there was one point where we, we were split up. I forget what we were all looking for, but I ended up in the breakers area and like the, like there were, there were kids standing like on the other side of the, like this, the, the row of like, the, like down a ways, but they just kept their eyes trained on backyard breaks the entire time. Mm -hmm. Like they were like, they, they, other, they were with other people and other people were like doing whatever, but they, like, they were just like staring right at backyard breaks. And that was just like their, I don't know what, what it was, but it was like, all, like all eyes of a certain generations yeah. were all pointed right at backyard breaks. You know, whereas, we may have seen an actor or something back in the day where we would have been just entranced right. and right. watching it. <laughs> These are oh, yeah. their television stars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, really you know, EP, you mentioned that neither Panini or Backyard Breaks have official response for it, but let's talk a little bit about <laughs> Backyard Breaks unofficial response. Uh, the video that they released about the situation. I loved it. Oh perfect. my god! I sent it to you guys as soon as I. I, I think they yep. had it posted for like thirty seconds, and I'm like, "This is amazing!" And I sent it <laughs> off to you guys right away. I, my only complaint was that they tainted one of the greatest TV shows soundtracks and used uh, the leftover <laughs> theme at the beginning for the sad music. Which, if and you, you haven't watched, are probably leftovers, the only person who's ever thought. Of that. <laughs> nope. No, EP, I did. I, I guarantee did. you, EP did. Left, You're yeah, outnumbered yeah, in yeah. this okay. pod yeah. on yep. the leftovers. It's one of the greatest shows ever. Yeah, still um, has my name on it. it <laughs> again, Sue <laughs> yeah. might right. retro Damn. trading. I cards. just gave Mike, myself Mike. up. Yep. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> on brand. Yep. Absolutely mm -hmm. on brand. And just... I, Mike, you, I'm spoiler alert. You, you might disagree with this, but I thought it was just genius. I mean, yeah. to me, they were like, Hey, if you think we're getting all these break or all these huge hits, why would you break with anyone else? It was just, <laughs> I hate to give these guys credit and we've been giving them a lot of credit throughout this, this mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah. Strangely. I hate to give these guys more credit, but my God, whoever came up with that as an idea, I thought it was genius. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. And to go to your your point, Mike, about uh, comparing them to wrestling, there was a point I just saw a video about this um, where um, USA was trying to like kick WWE during the Attitude Era was trying to kick them off the air, and they said you can't say all these words. Like I had a list of these words, 
and WWE, like the wrestlers, went up on on the stage on the st- podium DX and did, did like it, yeah. yeah, and did like yeah. a, like a like a like a like a <laughs> professional looking thing where they actually, but it was like a, a huge joke mm-hmm. where they read off all the words they couldn't say and stuff like that. And very it had that kind of vibe to me. Like there, it was this is definitely like a wrestling. This is a skit. Like this is a wrestling a bit. And in one day. let they, me tell you, I heard that USA Network loved yes. the skit when they did it. Yes, too. The ratings went off brilliant. the charts. They loved yeah. it. They said, "You guys are in. We're not kicking <laughs> you out now. Don't worry about it. Just keep doing what you're doing." Yeah, I agree that the video is pretty entertaining. Um, I just, I I see a lot of people talking about how it's brilliant marketing. I I really don't feel that it's brilliant marketing. They're just marketing to their base. Um, The same people that we're going to watch and we're going to break with them are going to continue to watch and breaking with them. I I don't think that kind of a video, while it's totally on brand for them and I understand why they did it, I don't think it's really going to bring in any new people that weren't going to it's not going to you know change the opinion of people that don't like them the people in the middle aren't aren't going to be moved by that so uh that's my only thing i like i agree it was hilarious like why not do that you know you have your base you're you're already the biggest breaker you know you can you know kind of rally the troops around you so to speak so but right uh, i mean, I I agree with that. I, I will say this. I mean, I I, I agree a hundred percent because I thought it was genius. I loved it. I'm not going to break with them. Like it yeah. didn't. It wasn't like oh now I'm going to break. EP, you don't. You wouldn't do breaks anyway. I don't think. No. no, uh, no. But you're not going to. You wouldn't break with them if you were no. probably. I will no. say the only thing the the only bump in users may be from the sports car <laughs> radio video. <laughs> If people actually think they're getting juice boxes, maybe they will say, oh, Sports Card Radio is saying they're getting juice boxes. Maybe I'll jump into a break and get one of those those huge cards. I could see more people jumping from that than actually jumping from their response because their response was directed right at their base for sure. Okay, I also well, see it as, as okay. a way for them to just make their make their base stronger. Like, oh, yeah. Strangle hold their yeah. base for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's. Well, Joe jumped the shark a little bit again, as usual, but I did want to talk (laughs) about what do you think your impact, the impact of this is on backyard breaks? I'll let you give your opinion, EP, because we already know that Joe, how Joe feels about that. Uh, I mean, it's, I think it's going to be great for them. Like this is perfect, a market, a perfect uh, commercial for them, for people who haven't break, broken with them before. And for their people that are already breaking with them, like they're going to be even more, Oh, I'm just going to stay with the guys that get the juice cases. And I already enjoy watching them. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's per, I think they're, 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 they're going to benefit greatly from, from this whole thing. And they're fanboys. Whew, they're like they're worse than PSA fanboys, man. <laughs> I, I, they they will jump people if you say any negative words about them. And th- th- a video like this, this whole this whole sports card radio investigation, and you know collectibles guru and all that, they they are out in force mm-hmm. defending backyard breaks. And of course, you you know like I, I don't know. It kind of reminded me of when you when you do really well in a fantasy football trade and people say, Oh man, you really killed it that trade. And you try and deny it. You're like, Oh, I, I didn't do that. Great. It was okay. I guess I did. Okay. To me, it kind of felt like that. It's like these people don't want to admit that it's a possibility because it somehow taints the cards that they get from them or something. I, I don't understand it. Just, Hey, if they're, if you think your breakers getting juice boxes, be like, yeah, I'm not, my breakers getting juice boxes and I am in every one of their breaks. Absolutely. I would be. And but no, very I, defensive. I think this podcast alone is a pretty good representation of the fact that there are probably reasonable people in the middle that have seen all this and come to the conclusion of, you know what, this really wasn't fair. You know, just because people are throwing numbers out there, nobody has shown us one piece of evidence to back up the claim. And, you know, like I, I guarantee you a week ago, I would have laughed at you if you said pretty much next week, you're going to do a 45 minute video talking about how backyard breaks isn't bad. Like, <laughs> like here we are. Like, I, I feel like all of us, are, like we don't, we're not the target market for that, but you can't help but see what happened and maybe feel a little bit for them as a company. Like bring me some evidence 
tell me like what they're doing and prove it and then i'll get behind your story but like we can't just go by numbers people are throwing out there and and opinions people are throwing out there to try to tear down a business whether i like them or not that's not the way it should work and i i feel like you have to use a little bit more responsibility when you're posting videos to a lot of people on youtube or anywhere else before you you throw these accusations out um what do you think the impact is on panini EP? Um, well, I, I, this is kind of um, one of the same. Like, I think a lot of people like to rip on Panini and a lot of people like to rip on Backyard Breaks, which is why this kind of created a perfect storm of what, what all, we're, we spent 45 minutes. We're going to spend 45 minutes at least talking about it here. So, like, the, the thing is, um, I feel like Panini, because Panini is a the giant corporation, they're easy. It's easy to hate them. Mm. Uh, it's easy to rip on them for everything that they do. And so I feel like they, they've been kind of drugged through the mud, even though there's no, as you said, no evidence that anything has been done. And I, again, it, 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 let's say for some, let's say somehow backyard breaks is getting juice boxes. I don't think it's like the, the suits at Panini that are making this decision because like we said, it doesn't benefit them in any way whatsoever. Like it might be some, there might be somebody on a lower level, like some wholesaler or, or somebody in the warehouse. I'll, I'll disagree that with that last for. part. Oh, really? I'll disagree with that last part. Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. If someone random, pulls a the triple logo man i think the triple logo man is such a kind of a bad example because it's it's such a big card because of how it was marketed but if someone buys a box of national treasures from panini and opens it up at home and they'll throw it on twitter like look at this cool this this really expensive awesome card i got and it'll get a few you know hundred maybe a couple of thousand views backyard breaks is watched by a lot of people whether you break with them or not so to have people's eyeballs on their breaks breaking panini products and showing these awesome hits i don't think is a bad thing for panini it, it is they're, in this they're, case, they're, it they're getting eyeballs yeah but they're nobody's gonna want to buy that product nobody's gonna want to buy that product now because the, the, is this you know, the, it's but this spent. is after they already sold a ton of it and if they sold it to the distributors already they've already made their money right like if the distributors bought a ton, the only people who actually would so, hurt is the distributors, right? Yeah, how also, does it, how does it help them if they already sold the product? Because oh, you get these massive hits out of this product. What's the next product coming? But we we said that they, this they didn't they would have had to spend forty I'm not, million. Which I'm is not like, saying I'm not saying that this is is uh, like an unbelievable like huge spike for Panini. What I am saying is it's not a bad thing. It's not like they're if they've already sold the product. It's not like Oh, who cares if the product goes down in price the last few cases that are out there because this this big hit got shown. It it helps them get eyeballs on their product. I, I think anyway. I don't think it's a, a it's a complete negative like you're playing it off to BEP. I I think there is a lot of positive in that. I don't the thing is though, they have so many I bet you backyard breaks doesn't barely scratches the surface as far as total sales. They probably have celebrities that buy more cases or, you know, some drink or something like that, that, yeah, like that, that are buying tons of cases. So you're, you're saying that they're going to, that somebody up in Panini is going to like take all these whales and say, we don't care about them. We only care about this backyard breaks. No, I never said that. Both. Whoa, okay. way to just throw those words right into my no, mouth and pretend no. I'm shooting them out. I'm just I saying, like, you made it sound like it's a complete negative for Panini to okay. have backyard breaks, have these hits. It's not. I mean, having these hits shown on a national stage with, how many thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people watch back here? They are the biggest breaker. I guarantee you a ton of people. All this, isn't the, that a business strategy, Mike? There's no there's no such thing as bad um, uh, bad news or something. I, I mean, honestly, no, I, I think- No such thing as bad, as bad publicity, press publicity. Yeah, yeah like- that's something I, I don't people know. say that don't own businesses because I, <laughs> I don't. I hear that thrown around all the time. And let me tell you, I own a daycare. There are bad publicity I could have that well, would ruin my that's business. Well, there's a little like, different. That, that, no, it's not. Like there, that that I hear that phrase said all the time, and I always shake my head because it's the dumbest thing. Just because Vince McMahon may have been able to run a wrestling company based on that, like <laughs> there are a lot of other companies that can get bad press that it will absolutely. Oh hurt yeah, if business. you lose a kid, <laughs> if you lose a kid, I'm sure that bad. Yeah, well, if if, if there's out. a publicity <laughs> out there that Jif peanut butter is killing people when they eat it, you know what? It's probably not going to be good for their business. Like, right. I, I hate that phrase. 
and it's the dumbest thing that people <laughs> throw around. But, but we're sitting here talking about it. How many more eyeballs do you think is on backyard breaks right now because of this controversy? I mean, how many people are looking at the stuff that they've, they're, they're selling and thinking about buying breaks? I don't think we've talked about them straggle holding their base. I, I don't think this has been as bad for them and Panini as, as EP might think. Well, I, I, I do agree bad. that it helped. <laughs> backyard breaks let me talk yes. here on the host uh but panini i really you think told me you wanted us to fight i did but <laughs> you know, now it's time to let me talk uh, i i think it's a real it really doesn't do anything either way for panini like i don't there are plenty of reasons to not like panini and you know they're still trying to get all the old redemptions thrown out in court like the fact that redemptions even exist and they have to fulfill them so there are plenty of other reasons to hate panini that are legitimate i don't mm -hmm. think this i don't think people are going to feel sorry for panini in this case i don't think they're going to hate panini like people it, it's they're just going to go about their business they are what they are and they have the faults they have they have the strengths they have i don't really think it makes much of a difference for panini uh, i agree <laughs> okay great i'm glad 100%. we agree on something um last one how about the impact on sports card radio I think it's the same as backyard breaks. They have their base. If you if you like sports card radio, you're gonna like sports card radio. If you don't, this isn't gonna sway you one way or the other. I mean, EP doesn't like him at all, so he, he's not gonna <laughs> it's watch. An exaggeration. Um, a little joke. <laughs> <laughs> joke. So, so I mean, I I don't think it moves the needle. They might have gotten a few extra viewers, but I I think at the end of the day, they're gonna stay what they are. I think they get more followers and more subs. I think more people get, I think there's a bit more word out. And especially if you do an eight hour live stream, like you're going to, you know, people are going to hop on. If they had thought about hopping on before they're going to hop on and they think they probably grab, I don't know. I didn't look at their subscriber numbers before and after, but I'm guessing they probably did. They'll probably well. grab, they'll probably grab subs, but I don't think that their, their videos will increase in viewership. If that makes sense. Like people might've subbed and maybe they're just watching for that specific topic. I don't think their videos like, that have nothing to do with that topic are going to go through the roof. Uh, I think their, their viewership is probably going to stay pretty much the same, but yeah, subs, I completely agree. Uh, well, I mean, also like the thing is like, there's probably a lot of people out there who weren't aware of them before and now they are. And maybe this is something that they like. And I think it will increase their views of their, maybe not their old videos, but I mean, upcoming videos. I think it's, I think it's good for their viewership. Yeah. And you know, there are a lot of people out there that don't like backyard breaks. So this kind of, you know, puts the us and them kind of thing they can be one half of that just i i think it's the same thing with backyard breaks you know you're rallying that base and maybe sports card radio is rallying the anti-backyard break side and they're maybe grabbing a little more of that market so yeah I, I think it will probably help them overall i mean it's a weird world we live in and you know getting subs and views on youtube really has more to do with you know how you promote yourself and you know the things you come out and are willing to say than it does the content that you provide so uh one last direction i want to take this a little different route i've seen a lot of people talking about you know the fact that breaking is gambling we can all agree on that right like you're paying money and you're trying to get something of value for it so mm -hmm. uh i you know, I remember back in the days where you could play daily fantasy football, you could play yearly fantasy football. It wasn't regulated by the states. You could play it anywhere. We've seen over the years, as that got more popular, that the states started regulating. We live in Pennsylvania. You want you their know, cheddar. Yeah, they, they want their cut of it. And, you know, the fantasy football sites all had to partner with the casinos that are licensed in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. to be able to operate in Pennsylvania. Do you think that breaking will ever get to that point? Should it get to that point? <sighs> That's tough because if you buy into a break, there is the possibility of getting nothing. Right. Like if you buy into a break and everyone got something, I could understand where it's like, well, you just bought a depreciated, you know, item, you know, something that has lost value. So that's that's tough. Um, I think like like, for example, razes are not technically allowed. 
on Twitter, but what's the difference? I mean, I, and I see Leighton doing high end, you know, where it's, it's 10 people buy into a break and it's 10 cards that they put into boxes and one card could be worth $200 and one card could be worth $4,000, $5,000. So like, it is so borderline. Like I could, if someone pushed me one way or the other, I'd be like, yeah, that's probably the right answer. I mean, there, it's just, there's so much nuance in, in what you would consider gambling because we think it is because you're paying say $200 to buy into a break and you might literally get nothing mm -hmm. or you pay $200 and get a triple logo, man, that's worth millions of dollars. I mean, it is, it's like buying a lottery ticket with the potential of that lottery ticket being worth 50 cents or being worth, you know, a million dollars. Yeah. The, the, I think the, when the daily fantasy stuff happened, like also poker, like online poker also got, got uh, kicked off and you had to like, mm -hmm. the same, under the same mm -hmm. regulation. And that's why there's a lot of crossover between like daily fantasy people and um, mm -hmm. poker people. And I think, I feel like breaks are 100% in that group. And if some people like uh, governments started looking closely at it there, we, I could totally see a regulation of it. The latent things the, that um, those packs seems a little bit less. So, I mean, there's still, some var variants, but you're if you're talking about they don't know what the 10 things are that uh, it feels like it's a little bit better. Where when you're doing a break, like there's no we have no idea what's in that box. Or it, what, it's what, what's it, the like box, I but. agree with you, it's oddly like the least gambling thing because you're <laughs> right. definitely getting something, right? But it is but also the still... most gambling thing because you're paying three thousand dollars to get into this 10 card break, and the, right. your your result could be a two hundred dollar logo man of uh Ryan Tannehill. Yep, it's it's still, Which it's still I've seen. Like, it's, could you imagine paying three thousand dollars for that? I mean, so yeah, it's it's so it's it's a fluid thing, man. It's very 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 strange. Both luck based contests, which that is, you know, that's yeah. what Wick is regulated, right? Yeah. Okay, let me throw this out to you here. Mm -hmm. You know, they regulate fantasy sports now. You have a company, a gigantic company, in fanatics that's going to be taking over the card industry. They're a company who's also talking about getting into online gambling. Mm -hmm. They're a company who has talked about having their own break rooms. I feel like the regulation might come at that point. I think right now, I don't know that breaking, like you have backyard breaks located out of what, Florida, I think. You have different places here and there, but over the whole country, it's not necessarily a huge thing. I mean, it's a big thing in the industry, but I don't know how big it's considered. The like, two biggest are in Florida, ironically. I don't know if any government agencies would think it was big enough to look at but i wonder when you have a gigantic gigantic multi-billion dollar corporation that's taking over it and they're going to be running other a, a betting platform too if that might be when the governments look at it and say yeah you know what that's gambling let's reg regulate that too by by the way if fanatic starts break rooms i i will be breaking with fanatics if we think they're, if we think Panini's goose and other people, you don't think Fanatics is going to goose their own breaks. Yeah. I'll be breaking with Fanatics. Wow. Okay. I think that's a great place to leave it this week. That was a fun discussion. You guys duped it out a little bit there. I'm not sure I'm ready to declare a winner. I mean, if anybody watched this video and wants to let us know who you think won the fight, they can put it in the comments. But <laughs> other than that, I had a good time this week. Good chat. And we'll be back next week. Take care, guys. See you, buddy. Adios. <laughs>